Hello. So we've got um, Layla and Ali here who are my publishers and none of this could have happened without them. But um, yeah, so we're day one into being a published author, which is just beyond my wildest dreams almost. Um, but I couldn't have done it without you. So I want to say a huge big thank you. Um, oh, but I also you. wanted to just almost hand it over to you so you can chat and just have a fluid chat really and while you ask me my first question I'm just going to open my bottle because I've been saving this bottle of Bolly for when I become a published author so over to you when I get drunk. <laughs> oh amazing! <laughs> well, I'm going um, to open my, my small bottle of Prosecco that I've been saving for about an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> <Brilliant>. <laughs> Uh, well, that leaves me to do the talking then. So yeah. um, when uh, Lucy first came into our, our office, I didn't really have a really fixed concept of what Generation X and what a Xenial was and what their values were, despite kind of uncovering through the process a bit of self-discovery and realising that I could, I was born in the right age group, my kind of, my background, the things hey. I remember growing up. Yay! <laughs> Um, it was all quite similar. So I've, I've learned a lot about myself, I think, through the process of Fantastic. understanding Generation X and Leader X. But for those out there who don't really know exactly what is Gen Generation X, what are their values and what are they doing that's really shaking up the workplace? Okay, so, um, yeah, so just to put it into context, the reason why I wrote this book was because I've always been into um, almost like behavioral science about, you know, why people behave the way that they do. Um, and I always uh, known that your environment shapes you. But every time I went to do some research on people in my kind of ilk, my generation, well, there was very little out there. Everyone was talking about the boomers. Everybody was talking about the, the, the millennials, but nobody was talking about us. And yet we were influencing from the sidelines you know we were in middle management or um for the last 20 30 years we've been influencing um but nobody was talking about us so that's when i started doing my research through the work that i do anyway in leadership um i found that there were these five core values which as i started pulling them all together i was like yeah that's really cool <laughs> um so the first one then was um it's all about autonomy and so that means having the freedom to um, make your own decisions, but also having that personal responsibility over the impact that your decisions have. So total ownership. Um, and as a result of that, because they've been brought up that way, they also lead that way. So they are yeah. the ultimate empowerers. They're the ultimate team players from that perspective because they hand over to the team and then let them get on with it. So it's awesome. Then... Mm. Um, almost the opposite side to um autonomy which you wouldn't think would go together but they really value relationship as well so with yeah. relationship it's actually about you know um how can we create strong relationships partnerships collaboration so that we can all be awesome together so mm. that the ultimate teamwork and then the other value um which really ties into right now is um the value of freedom so that yeah. is generally about people being free to live their lives the way they want to live them, um, whatever they, however they want to wear their hair, whatever sexual preference, um, however they want to work. And who knew by March 2020 um, that we'd be calling on the leader X's because we need to remotely be autonomous. We need those strong relationships now more than ever. Um, mm. And in, in a lot of ways, we're giving ultimate freedom even though so many of our freedoms are taken away temporarily. Um, yeah, so definitely we'll, in terms of your day and, and how yeah. people are managing their time, uh, you know, what, when they start their day, when they have their lunch breaks, all of these different things are, are just, now, now you're in control. As long as you kind of dial in at the right time and yeah. you know, meet the right people at the right point, there is a lot more freedom generally. Day -day. Yeah, and I think from what I've seen, the, um, the Gen Xers and the, the older millennials, the, the Xennials, they, they're totally going with the flow. They're, they're, they're doing all right in this period. Yeah, they're yeah. struggling, um, you know, especially if there's kids at home and, um, and dealing with that. But actually, they are flexible. They are adaptable. Um, and, and they're being really empathetic and understanding of other people's needs and challenges. And it's just 
the way that these guys are. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, they're, they're the perfect people to lead, but they're also, yeah, the perfect people to have on your team right now. Um, we need them. Um, mm -hmm. But the other thing that, um, that the other two values, the one was um, fun. And I have had mm -hmm. so much fun chatting and working with a load of other um, X Gen recently because, yeah, we're coming on calls, you know, kids are running through. Yesterday I was doing one, the cat was tapping me on the head, and we're just having a giggle about it. <laughs> and again, yeah. it just sums up who we are. And, and then yeah. it comes on to the final one, which is all about experience. And it's rather than thinking about the final destination, the retirement, or trying to live every day, um, you know, the YOLO generation, you only live once, every day's got to be pursuit of happiness. Actually, it's just saying, do you know what? Some days are going to be shit. Some days yeah. are going to be hard, but other days are going to be awesome, and it you just got to roll with it. So that's that's my research. That, that rolling with the punches, um, it, that that's sort of what this package is all packaged up as. These people are kind of flexible, agile. They work well on their own. They work well on the team. They create fun places and fun experiences for the whole team. And I guess ultimately, what that's really coming back down to is a happier, more productive team and a more impactful leader. Totally. Do they, do they, sorry, do they, do they find um, that the, the, there's certain resistances that they come up against sort of it, it, within different industries? Is there like a common leader X resistance from different generations or like what, what's their biggest kind of challenge on that front? Obviously, leader X is being Gen X is kind of just being themselves. Those are naturally the values that they have that you spoke about. But translating those into a workplace that is not just full of people like them. Obviously, you're saying having the Zoom calls, and I've I've seen the same. You know, like if if you know the cat jumps in, or like you know, I've I've been on a, a webinar where a kid came in asking for a lid to become like taken off, but it's just like people laugh it off. People yeah, like, you oh, go with the flow. Original, but yeah. People just get on with it. But I, I wondered how that translates into like a, a larger corporate or a workplace where there's lots of different. Um, generations at play and, mm. and kind of from from the older and the younger what sort of resistances they usually so come what i've found is that um certain industries or um particularly i suppose engineering manufacturing or some of more even like the financial institutions that have been traditionally um very autocratic or very hierarchical and structured and formal they've actually found um some of this quite a challenge um because it's always worked for them the way that it's always worked. So why change? But because Gen X and the Xennials have been influencing from the side for quite a long time, um, most are aware of something called flexible working. Um, most are mm. aware that this thing called remote working exists and they've resisted it, um, at, which has been to the frustration of um, the leader X. Um, mm. But the, the whole concept of, customer experience and people experience and, and the flexibility we now have is because of this generation who's been doing it for a while or at least talking about it. Um, but yes, yeah, certain industries um, that they've been very reluctant to change and for some um, Gen Xers, um, they've just kind of got stuck almost. And so that's why I wanted to write the book really, just to say, these these other guys and girls they're going to start retiring soon they're going to start handing over yeah. the mantle to you um so this is your opportunity to really step up and lead the way that you've always wanted to lead um yeah. and not be stuck anymore so it was yeah. it really was a call to arms um you know to to evoke a whole generation of new leaders um but actually yeah the what's happening right now is catapulted that and accelerated it no yeah. end Exactly. Yeah, I think Layla and I both sort of experienced that within um, within kind of traditional publishing um, there when when we kind yeah. of left to set up our own thing about sort of nine years ago. It was just um, it was very old school. Um, yeah, there wasn't much room school. for ideas from younger people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, just even yeah. those kids, just one of these new fad yeah, ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Amazon's nothing to consider. Kindle's just a flash in a pan. We don't need to adapt our business model. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah. Do or die, basically. Yeah, yeah, totally. And so that's what, um, you know, I always said, you know, the 2020s were going to be our decade. Um, yeah. Little did I know that, like I said, it, by the third, you know, month of the decade, actually, <laughs> we were the ones who were going to be pushing these things forward and we were going to show that actually 
technology, that flexible mindset, having fun, connecting with your people, but empowering them all at the same time. This is what's going to keep us going, um, not just through yeah. this crisis, but actually if a recession hits and then thinking creatively about what we do later, it's these values and these skills that we absolutely need. So, mm. so yeah, it's a perfect timing for this book. Um, it is. We're, we've all been shaken up by Corona. Yeah. And, and I, when we go back to work, when we go back to our offices, it won't quite be the same. And there will be opportunities for Leader X to start doing more, pushing the envelope a bit and getting some change, especially yeah. if they've trialled things in this period at, at home where everyone's had to work remotely. And if that's worked, which by and large it seems to yeah. be, then, you know, the resistance from the older generation to like, you know, get suited and booted and be in the office at 9am every morning, it's just gone now. Yeah, and do you know what, one of the, the, some of the conversations I've already started having with um, people is, what happens when we all do go back to some kind of normality? Um, what yeah. do we do then? How are we going to bring things together in a new way? Um, and part of the book, so obviously the first part of the book is talking about why these people are the way that they are and these values. But then yeah. the final part of the book is really actually giving some tools, tips and skills um, to say, follow this uh, methodology, the five my methodology and actually start again. Start looking at where you are right now in the my present. Look at who you need to be as a leader. What, how does your team need to be? What do you want your business to evolve into? And then finally, my legacy is what's the impact that you really want to have? Um, and I think this is a perfect time. Take, take the next month or two to work through the book um, and, and do some of those conversations, do some of the activities that are in the book with your team, even remotely. Um, yeah. And then when we do get ready to start integrating um, and reinventing again, well, you've got everything you need there. You've done the hard work in this time yeah. out. Yeah, I think it's a great yeah. idea. I mean, now's the perfect time to actually go through that five miles process that we detail in the book to actually get yourself sort of match fit for when, when the office is open again, because people will more, be more open-minded now having been through this period of change than they may have been before. Yeah, and do you know what? Um, I've had some feedback from people who've already um, delved into the book today. Um, oh, and they're just saying, Yeah, oh, no, and they've said, um, actually, they just love the the writing style that it feels like they're just having a chat with me so thank you for that because you pushed me to be my, myself um, and <laughs> they also said that um, they loved that it was almost like a bit of a yin yang approach that so wasn't just like you're an amazing leader it's all brilliant um, or it's all really doom and let's slag off the boomers or whatever there's a real balance yeah. in there and um, yeah. I said it's because it was written by um, a, a realistic optimist which um, is another <laughs> definition of the leader x do you know what? it's all great but it's also a bit crap as well um, so yeah. how can you navigate that so they just said it's, it's quite a refreshing read which which is yeah. nice because the only other people that had actually read it was you guys <laughs> so yeah, we loved it. <laughs> no, I, when you came in you had your tone and your kind of casual and pragmatic approach like just saying it like it is in a very simple kind of non-grandiose not using jargon way I thought was really really refreshing especially for a book in this space and I really wanted to keep that voice so it feels like if you were just telling teaching me how to do this or if you if you were just having a chat with me and telling me about leader x like like now we we managed to capture that on the page rather than something that sounded like a kind of very dry stuffy boring business but we wanted to get more lucy on the page so yeah. i'm glad yeah you. i think that's 100 percent it like one of one of the main goals that we always have and i think we probably mentioned it to you when you came in for the kickoff is like by the time somebody's read the book they should know exactly what it feels like to work with you like they should know exactly what it feels like to attend one of your seminars or hear you speak at an event because they've they've spent 8 10 12 however long it takes them to read they've spent a lot of hours with you like one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. So that, that's where our job really comes in to, to make it as informative and genuine uh, as it can be. And I know when, when you first came in for, for the kickoff with us, you, you had drafted out quite, quite a lot of a manuscript and we did, we did quite a lot of a deep dive in that initial kickoff and off the back of that ended up reworking it quite a lot. So how, how did you find that part of the process when you know, you'd, you'd come in with what you thought was a first draft and it sort of... It didn't, it didn't get torn apart, but we, we, we removed parts of it around and added bits. How, how did you find that part of the process? Um, it was really tough, I'm not going to lie. Um, mm. What was tough about it was that I was like, yeah, but that bit's really good and, and I really <laughs> like that. And then it was when you were coming back and saying, 
Yeah, but you've repeated it there. You've just said it in a different way. I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, and then other <laughs> points are like, what are you actually trying to say here, Lucy? And it really, really pushed me to, because I could waffle on, and there was a lot of waffle in the original manuscript. Um, so it was kind of like tough love. But again, I remember in that original meeting, I said to you, I need you to be tough with me. Um, yeah. I need you to be brutal and honest because I'm a strong dominating character. Uh, I'm a naturally a leader, so I will try and take the lead, but I need you to lead me. Um, mm. So you, you did exactly what I needed you, you to do to manage me. So it was brilliant. Um, and that's why we've got a brilliant book um, that I'm really proud of. So thank you. Oh, oh you're doing all your homework. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. And I, I also said that um, I wanted tight deadlines um and you gave me those as well um because i'd been working on this book in some guise or another for over two years um so when we started talking whether it's september october last year we're like right yeah. it's gonna be this 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 and i'm like brilliant that's just what i need i needed somebody to take control which you did um yeah. and here we are today um it's amazing Thank yeah you. as we speak you are you're you're in the top 10 in yeah. um in um bestsellers in business management and leadership and Woo! I think in hot new releases within that category you're number two but oh. the night is young so wherever well you're do you know what out, Ali I have I've been my um I've looked at it and I've um I, I don't know whether you can see there but actually every other book that's above me um some of them are really seasoned amazing books that I actually yeah. give to my clients <laughs> but they've got them. I know, amazing. But they've all gone down to 99p. I know. I don't need to anymore. They can just have mine. Yeah. Um, yeah. But every Good single spot. one of those above me, they've all slashed their prices down to 99p as well. Um, right. So they obviously feel threatened by me. <laughs> well, that's a form of flattery, isn't it? Yeah, totally. And do you know but what? It's an amazing I, company that you're keeping there, like you totally. said. Like, how, how, do, how does that feel, just it seeing feels your name alongside that? Amazing. Um, <laughs> just, and, and especially as I saw it going up the ranks and hit, uh, overtaking some of the other people who I just truly respect. But I'm above Simon Sinek at the moment. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how long I'll stay there, but at the moment I am. And, and I mean, yeah, I, I've just got such respect for all these other authors. Um, they inform what I do and hopefully I can inform what they do. Um, so yeah. just to have my book amongst these legends, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just buzzing right now. Um, oh, <laughs> definitely so, worth opening the Bollinger yeah. then. Exactly, yeah, 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 really happy. So, um, a birthday cake as well, I hope. Yeah, well, this is it. So guys, I am gonna have to cut the call short uh, because it's my daughter's sweet 16 and um, she's doing it on lockdown, um, just oh. like the rest of us. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna go and celebrate with some birthday cake in a minute. Um, but I just wanted us all to get together and just raise a toast to Leader X because uh, we've Leader done it, X. guys. Leader X. Yeah. Where's, the book? Where's the book? Oh, yes, I better show you the book. <laughs> That's the <Yeah>. book. <laughs> there you go. So, all right, well, have a lovely <laughs> evening. You too. And I, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Congratulations. Thank you. Bye.